Hey guys, here comes Anna Chiaretta Lavatelli, right? Perfect. From the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, Illinois. Hi everybody. This part doesn't count because the slide's not ticking and so I can just sort of talk and stall and piss Coven off some more. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> this talk is called Videological Anarchisms. It originally came with the subtitle Rethinking Museum Video and a lengthy description that made very little sense. Uh, so it was a gamble for Coven to accept this proposal and we're gonna find out if it was a mistake. <laughs> the title comes from Hakim Bey's texts on ontological anarchy, which describe pirate islands outside of the rules of society amidst the network of ocean shipping trade. He calls these islands pirate utopias and declares our need to create a space for ourselves, a temporary autonomous zone, also known as TAS. Um, this is a temporary space to be completely free of the rules of culture and society. So, art and technology are ideal platforms for anarchy. The breaking down of rules and regulation to empower the individual. Note my use of gifts to undermine the 20 slide limit. <laughs> That's right, Coven. <laughs> so how do we look at this on the large scale? Lyft is subverting the taxi commission by using technology to allow individuals to connect one another to get rides and uh, pay each other for rides. Uh, we have Airbnb where you can pay one another to use each other's spaces. And one reason these services are so amazing, besides no one being murdered, is that they also function as a social platform. Um, it's a fun time with nice people sharing their nice things. Um, yeah, I'm not addressing the corporate factor, nor the economic damage to the individuals in these fields of work, but I do believe the core of the idea is good, uh, leveling the playing ground and removing regulation. And one of my favorite platforms like this is the good old YouTube. Um, it's an amazing extension of the original intentions of video, providing accessibility of filmmaking to the general public. And it's a great platform for teenagers to become international pop stars without any need to get involved with the television broadcast industry. Um, there are a million pages like this out there. And um, of course, there's the user factor, which is the fact that you can go on YouTube and you can bounce around between every kind of genre, every type of video, across cultures, across languages, and jump around within those videos. Watch the parts you want, skip to another video. And so it's a completely uh, limitless experience of video. So how do we do this? Um, this is a project uh, by David Lynch called Interview Project, which is a nonlinear documentary on uh, the underbelly of the US, peculiar personalities that were interviewed and put onto the map. They can be viewed in part or totality, but you're still viewing on your own. We don't have the social experience. And so what we need to think about is how we can provide a space to use these digital tools, enable people to participate, like say, the Blacklist Project, which was this really amazing use of YouTube at the Brooklyn Museum a few years ago, wherein uh, the visitor inside the exhibition using a MacBook could post videos in reaction to the exhibition. Um, but it's just their voices standing on their own. Um, at our museum, the MCA, uh, we have the TCA, the Teen Creative Agency, and this is them in their living room, uh, which is a space they use to uh, engage the guests of the museum throughout the year. We documented their big annual event, 21 Minus, got a bunch of footage, and we thought, why not let these kids into the edit suite and make their own video, right? That'll be interruptive. And they made this crazy video that blew us away, unlike anything we would make but it's still a video, it's a linear experience. So looking at what we can do as an organization to open the door a little wider, how can we create fragments that can be engaged by the visitor on their own terms? Maybe it's somewhat like what we do with our image collections, right? Letting the visitor play with our images, do things with our images, uh, if, with Reich Studio creating an iPhone case, right? So the, the limits are kind of endless there, but we haven't really done that with our other media. What do we do with video? 
And in a world of charted territory like the museum, we're perfectly positioned to create these sort of poetic terrorisms through our exhibits and hopefully also through our interpretive media. And so how do we let them be that pirate with our interpretive material? I propose we fragment our video materials in order to allow the content to serve as a jumping off point for conversation rather than a closed circuit of information delivery. So, I close with this. How do we break down the rules of content creation, platform building, social interaction to leave a little space for a temporary autonomous zone?